her out. Sometimes I love a brunette, sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song says. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. Oh, come. Right, the song says, her. Sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. Okay. Her out. She appears to have taken more care with her appearance than the last time. Oh. Hearing. Looking at Donald. Necklace. Uh huh. She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful? That's not the corner of her eye. That is straight at him. Corner of... <laughs> that is... So he's all tore up. Look at them dark circles. Donald is always on edge. Mm-hmm. Dark circles. It's posture. Hands. What else is there? Leave me alone. No, I have to observe you. Uh. Shaving cut, okay. Where? Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he's trying hard to control himself. Wait, um, that's the shaving cut right there? Um... I should concentrate on the others. Oh. I should concentrate on the others. All right. Um... I already did them. Okay, let's check him out. Franklin Clark always seems at ease, regardless of where he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. Franklin Clark. Always seems at ease, regardless of where he is. Okay. Franklin Clark always seems at ease, regardless of where he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. I hope to concentrate on my guests. Hmm. I wish to thank you all for coming. Oh, okay, that's it. I wanted to bring everyone close to the victims here in order to unmask the murderer. Get to the point, Mr. Poirot. What do you want from us? Ask Megan the reason for this meeting. Tell Megan not to be in such a hurry. Okay. Megan, dear girl, please be patient. Mr. Poirot, how dare you address me by my first name? Please excuse me, mademoiselle. What I ask is that you search your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name, by chance, starts with P. Must we go into that? Damn. Okay. Um, tell Donald to get a grip on himself. Agree that the subject creates a feeling of discomfort. Okay. Oh, of course. Not if it makes you uncomfortable. Come on, Mr. Poirot. I imagine we all feel terribly uncomfortable about these murders. It's true. We've to catch the killer, not be spared the gory details. Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Well, I want to help you, but I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard, did your sister say she was seeing another man? 
She never would have told me. Why would she hide the fight from you? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behavior. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Silly things. Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. Qui sait? In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. Uh, is the killer sure of himself? I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait. Field 3 was packed with people. That's rather bold. Mm hmm. Is the killer a seducer? No. Wait, the man said. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that one. Does the killer like trains? Pastor Thailand. Maybe the murderer likes trains? Maybe. Uh, does, is the killer impulsive? The killer appears a crime to never forget to leave this intriguing. Yeah, yeah. Is the killer generous? Making sure that he is accused. In a okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence, that he has plenty of self-control, and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... Uh, ask Mary what is bothering her. Point out that she is short of money for the train. Push Mary so that she helps. Let's see what's Is bothering her. You, Mary? Well, Mr. Poirot, you see, I don't know if I can come to London just like that. It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Drower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir, I cannot accept. But you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very um. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. But of course, I shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. The meeting was most fruitful. Really? Hastings, I believe now we have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. Now it is time for us to use our grey matter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. I feel like the brother did it. Hmm. What do the victims have in common? 
Um, first victim was called Asher. Betty had problems with her boys. Famous retired doctor. Hmm. Miss Asher took coffee. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. The they were talking about his, her sister had a cough, too. So, Betty was seeing other men as well as Don. <gasps> she was seeing other men? Okay, wait. Who was this one? Betty had a photo of her and Donald. Oh, 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 wait. So, Donald was violent. Mrs. Asher's husband was violent. They also had... Oh! Clark was a retired doctor, and they both had cough medicine. Okay, got it. The first two victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the specialty of the third victim, Dr. Clark. We have a lead. It would pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Churston. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London, just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. Have you sent the reservation, but... Okay. Thank you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Torquay. Ask Dora is uh, ask if Dora is leaving her job. Are you leaving Cheston for good? Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. Uh, okay. Let's take a little gander here. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. Uh, wait. Go and find Lady Clark in her bedroom. Okay. Um, it would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any. Yeah, I'm trying to click on her. Oh, there we go. It wouldn't let me click on her. This poor woman is very ill. Dazed eyes. Punched fist. Uh, Please tell the nurse to hurry. Please. Can't tell it to me. 
work on anything else. Oh, the medicine. Please tell the nurse to hurry. Oh, it's Please. probably the medicine that's making. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. Okay. Back around here. Is this pen? Oh. Oh. What did I do? A new spring. Oh, okay. I just. Okay. Okay. Got a spring. Um, I'll look around here. Go and find Lady Clark in her bedroom. Oh, there's something on the floor. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any okay, longer. Okay, but there's something on the floor. It I need. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. Look at it. The Clark residence. Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. All right. Find the skeleton key. Yeah, uh, interesting. Oh, there it is. Here is the skeleton key. Give Lady Clark an injection. April 1925, Aceh Province, Sumatra. Oh. Give Lady Clark an injection. This thing? It's closed. Oh, yeah. In town? Ah, oh, Mr. Poirot. Oh, I feel better now. Thank you for your help. A uh, reminder of the invitation to ask. Okay. Madame, you are tired, so I will get straight to the point. What can you tell me about this business? What business, Mr. Poirot? No doubt. You wish to talk to me about what happened to your husband? Ah, yes. Oh, poor Carmichael. Has the madman who killed him been caught? Not yet, chère madame. There was a great many people in Chester on the day of the murder. Indeed. People go straight to the beach. They don't come near Coombe Side. So... There were no strangers around the house that day. Who said that? The people who live here. Your brother-in-law, Miss Gray. Miss Gray? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, but I insisted she should go. 
immediately. You are entitled to do so, Natri. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her. But at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. Oh. Okay. Oh, she's knocked out. Okay. Oh, wait. Wait, there's this... subject would probably be useful to me. Yeah, yeah, Let me pick that up. What is it? A silver comb. Looks like it can be used combined with something. Okay. Anything over here? Yes, let's go check there. This couple appears to be having fun. Lady Clark. Okay. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. The mechanism appears to be broken. We'll go back to it. Let's see. Oh, this object would probably be useful to me. And something. I've finished with this subject. Oh, okay. Well, fine. Uh... I've finished with this subject. Side table here. Oh, this another little thing. Be useful to me. Okay, a gold coin. Um, she's sleeping. Yeah, I must find a way to wake her up gently. Wait, take. I have to put a new spring here. Yeah, I have it. New spring. Oh, right there. Yeah. I hope that Hastings will not be cross with me. Two, three. I think that's it, right? Okay. Now it can work, right? There we go. Oh, little music box. Nope. Just wait. Let's go. Oh, what are we talking about? Ah, yes. Uh, Thora Gray. Oh, Carmichael had great esteem for her. But for me, she was nothing but a hypocrite. Indicate that Thor did a good job. You're probably right, madame. You have seen through her. I'm so pleased. But I've... Oh, convinced you. Reminder that Thora is an orphan. You are very harsh. Do not forget that the girl is an orphan. Yes. And she used the fact to get around men. Take Franklin. He's fallen for her sweet-talking charms. 
Oh, he's a lovely boy, very plucky and sure of himself. But so naive. Oh, when it comes to women. Miss Gray did look after you very well, though. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Gray? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like her. It proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. Hmm. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well, at 11 o'clock I saw her talking to someone. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man, with a very plain face. Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not... not a gentleman. It would be best to leave her to sleep now. All right. The telephone in the hall is ringing. Let's go. Get that phone. Why am I answering their phone? Hello? Poirot, is that you? Hello? Hastings here. Thank you for calling. Have you received a new letter from the murderer? No, thank goodness. How are things in Churston? I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent, and I have a skeleton key. Have you seen Thora Gray again? Briefly. But rest assured, I intend to summon her to London soon. She's a fascinating girl. But secretive. I would like to ask her a few questions. Poirot, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Each to his own, my friend. Yours are pretty often mine old ladies that have the maladies. Poirot, are you mocking me? No ill intended, rest assured. A bientôt, mon ami. All right. How am I going to open this trunk? Let us examine it. All right, let's see here. Some stickers. Hmm. Badly made in the United States. Uh -huh. back in the back that does not appear to be very you okay well you know what okay so oh I need a code all right I need to find the code hmm Find the code. Inspect the mansion, yes. Sir Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. Hmm. The door is locked. Ah, I have a skeleton key, no? Oh, yeah, yeah, This unit contains the medical records for Sir Carmichael Clark's patients. Let us study them closely and see if there are any familiar names. No dust on the records from A to D. They've been handled recently. No known names. Disappointing. Mm -hmm. Lots of dust. The records from E to Z have not been touched for years. No known names. Disappointing. Okay. Let's see here. I see some papers that were not. It's a missing knight. Yeah. Ernest Luggin. 
MD Brighton Cancer Institute 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comsite Cheston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Your sincerely, Ernest Logan. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Okay. Valuers report property. Build. Oh. Court and Brunskill. The name is familiar. Is that not the name of the firm Donald Fraser works for? Okay. This is up here. Oh. Uh, let's take a look around here. I can go any further. Oh, here's a map. Traditional Chinese map. Facsimile. South is on the top of the map. Oh. Compass. Point to the south. Bronze and Magnetite. Han Dynasty. Circa 210 BC. Purchased in Hong Kong, 1935. Okay. And there here. are some very valuable objects here. There are some very valuable objects oh. here. Oh, here's the paper. Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. B. Tidying up real estate property files. Done. C. Calling the lawyer about inventory. Done. D. Update the tenant farmer list. Done. E. Update land rent accounting. Done. F. Ordering a restock of arsenic. Done. P.S. I have left on the living room table some of my things I don't want to keep. The locket and the dagger. I am sure you know why. Thora. All right. Dragon. Oh. Dark the dragon for right? The dark dragon for have made. C. Mm hmm? Oh, there's blood on it. See? I knew it. I've already seen similar daggers. Information added, Sir Michael Clark. Okay. Comside's private collection. Purchases since 1920. The catalog for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's it in this room. Order and method above all. Let us finish examining the mansion while no one is around. Oh, okay. Um, 
I think that's it up here, right? Did I already go right here? So can Michael's collect Okay, yeah. Alright, let's go. Tired. Okay. Inspect, yeah. Uh let's see here. Still need to find the code. Mirror? Oh, of course, he has to check himself out. There you go. Let's get your ego points. Oh, I could go in here now. It wouldn't let me before. Okay. Hmm. Australia. Oh, I must need something to continue. This plate appears to be able to move, but something is blocking it. This plate appears. To... This plate appears. Okay, to so be they're all to... doing that. Okay. Oh, I can't. So that I can move it. This plate appears. Yeah. Hmm. Let's look around. Hmm. Desk. Over here more. Damn. I'm speeding over there. Franklin appears to be very active. Oh yeah, tennis. I can choose. Oh yeah. Hunting guns. Impressive collection. Franklin Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman. A good sportsman. A hunter, a traveler. Yeah. July nineteen twenty, Alaska Peninsula. February nineteen twenty two, South Africa. Okay. Is that it in here? And click on anything else. Franklin Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman. A good sportsman, a hunter, a traveler. How am I going to open? I wonder if that's the code. Fifteen twenty-seven. Nineteen. Oh, that was the code. The trunk. What a strange character, Franklin. Okay. Let's check this out. Uh, the code for something, right? Twenty-eight. Oh, okay, so maybe it has to be. Let's see. No, go back up. 
28 5 what's the other one 30 31 28 5 so what is this sound? I should be able to open the tank now. All right, Ellen. Wait. Oh, there we go. There we are. Okay, open. <laughs> I've been going past this modest guest house for so long. Right, let's see here. Let open this. Nothing in here. But in here. Nothing in there. Anything in here? Probably not. Oh, there is. Okay. Why has Franklin put an Allen key inside his trunk? Okay, let's open that. Open. Okay. Well, damn. Good Daddy. <laughs> Daddy whiskey. He really has refined tastes. Okay. Whiskey and other good quality drinks. Mr. Clark really has refined tastes. Hmm. All right. Um. No. What's in here? A pile of books, including one about dragons. Nothing interesting. Wait, how do I open that? Oh, wait, the Allen wrench. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have to do like this. There we go. An Allen key. It can yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that work? Oh, good. Finally. Okay. Oh. Purple? Uh, okay, so that one. Okay. And that was a school. Okay, and then happen uh, I didn't do that okay no there we go All right so that should take that off oh this engraving is not gosh this chest is I need to sort it out so complicated. Okay. All right. He's blocked. Wait. Like this, right? Franklin must really oh, love his country to have we go. in his trunk. I think I heard the panel above release. Took a while, but we figured it out. Okay. Now, a panel above this? Oh. A signet ring? A signet ring with a code written on it. 
1587. It may be useful to me. 1587. Thank you. Can I look in here now? Oh. Is Thoragray Comside Justin Devon? Arsenic Trioxide Thallium. Black Dra the Black Dragon's Curse. To Franklin, will never grow up. January 25, 1928. Car Charlotte. Okay. Oh, that's it? Wait, can I look in the drawers? Nope. Okay. Mm. Oh, no. It took me back in here. Okay. Back in this room, I guess. around the picture appear to have unlocked. I think I've already seen these symbols on Franklin's trophies. The Lion of Sumatra. Yeah, the lion. The Alaskan could mm. Sound of a mechanism. Strange way of protecting one's safe. Triangulating one's hunting sites on the map. What was that code? It was like 15. Fifteen. Fifteen eighty-seven, yeah, yeah. These documents are very likely going to help me for the rest of the inquiry. A dozen gold sovereigns, some shares for the Southern Railway and some treasury bills. This is not worth much, hardly enough to justify your robbery. A dozen gold sovereigns, some shares for the Southern Railway and some treasury bills. This is not worth much, hardly enough to justify your robbery. Hmm. Charlotte Clark Comside Churston, Devon, to Mr. Franklin Clark Peninsula Hotel, Salisbury Road, Ching Shatsui, Kowloon, Hong Kong, Comside, 1935, January 1st. I oh. At home, everything annoys me, starting with this young Thora Sir Carmichael is so fond of. I have nobody to share my feelings with, so I write to you. How can I tell you what happens to me? The simplest way, the better. I am doomed. I still have one year to live, no more. How do I know? I opened the secret drawer of Carmichael and read a letter not addressed to me. In this letter, Dr. Logan tells my husband in the most direct way the truth he conceals from me. Sir, I know, but my husband doesn't know I know. Please don't tell him. And if he shares the truth with you, act as you were surprised. Carl will probably speak in his usual convoluted way. But I wanted to be the first to announce it to you. 
It does matter to me that you are aware of what happens in Comside. Warm regards, Charlotte. Cam? Etton College School Year, 1912-1913. Franklin Clark. School report for Franklin Clark. According to his teachers, Franklin was a good student, but lacked discipline. Sir Carmichael Clark, Campside, Churston, Devon, to Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Sasbury Road, Tsinshasui, Kowloon, Hong Kong, Campside, 1935, January the 12th. Dear Franklin, First, I wish you a good start to a successful new year. I have received your letter dated December 10th. Thanks for defending my interest against Wang, this robber. Things could have got pretty bad if you weren't a real good-blooded guy. I envy you for that. Things go on here much as usual. Charlotte is moderately free from pain. I wish one could say more. You may remember Thora Gray. She is a dear girl and a greater comfort to me that I can tell you. I should not have known what to do through this bad time but for her. She has an exquisite taste and shares my passion for Chinese art. No daughter could be a closer or more sympathetic companion. Life has been difficult, but I am glad to feel that here she has a home and true affection. You wrote me you want to stay in China for one more year or even longer. I don't object. The longer you stay, the more opportunities you will have to increase our collection. Nonetheless, you should know that we miss you here, and that Charlotte will be gone by the time you come back. I am, dear Franklin, your truly affectionate brother. Okay. Oh, Can I go? I, I feel like I searched it. Four Chinese symbols are engraved on this padlock. At last, the cupboard is open. All right, what do we have in here? Traveling in China, a practical guide for English travelers. Um. The Railway Children, E. Nesbitt. For Franklin, on Tefis Christmas, 1910. Mm. Mm. Gentile and wild, English countryside revisited. Um, a mat, flask, and rifles. Franklin is very well equipped. That's it? Okay. Uh, I think we can... Can we leave now? I feel like we've done everything. I am not going to leave calm. Oh, okay. Okay, this way? Yeah. Where is the horrible smell of carrion coming from? Oh. Inspect the mansion surroundings. Okay. Ta -ta. The gardener does not follow the alignment. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. Round pellets. <laughs> Revolting. Round pellets. <laughs> Revolting. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. Hmm. <laughs> a 
this wisteria is in full bloom. This fountain makes a very relaxing sound. It was probably the gardener who lit this fire. Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. Mm -hmm. The subject would probably be useful to me. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. Why did Thora leave personal belongings behind at Combside? Thor left Sir Michael's gifts. Uh. Hmm, okay. Carmichael wrote Carmichael wrote Franklin to tell him that he found Thora farming. Thora left Sir Michael gifts. Hmm, hold on. Why did she leave her personal... Why did she do it? Okay. Yeah, there's the dagger. Thor does not want to be accused of theft. Okay. Everything that Thor Grey has left behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. He most probably gave them to her. But she chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when you know just how much Lady Clark mistrusted her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. More? Okay. Is Thora a poisoner? After living in the one year left to live. <gasps> Thor Grey had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. <laughs> the poison she ordered was for rats. Mm. The gardener must have made good use of it. Considering the stinking remains on the pass, not far from the property. I've finished here. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. Okay. This back. Telephone. Okay. Go call him. Nineteen. Yeah. Perfect. Nothing else is keeping me here. There we go. And now we call. Hello, Hastings. I have finished in Shurston. I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burnt document? Yes. You just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to read? You will see, my friend. 
À ce soir. Donald Fraser is here. He insisted on waiting to see you. Okay, talk to Donald. All right, let's go. Things, it would appear that you are getting slightly thin on top. Really? I hadn't noticed. Oh. Let him drink in peace. Well, I'm supposed to talk to him. All right, let's observe him then. This man is tired. Unshapen. Donald is short of sleep, and it looks as if he didn't even bother to undress before going to bed. Right, now we talk to him. Mr. Paddle, I don't know why I'm here. You wanted to talk? And you came to find the only man capable of hearing you. Mr. Paro, since Betty's death, I have doubts about myself. I don't know what to do. And I keep having a horrible dream three nights in a row. Have a drink and tell me about this dream. It's always the same. I'm on the beach with Betty. I grab her around the throat and I squeeze and squeeze until she's dead. Her head falls back and I see that it's no longer Betty. It's Megan's face. Have you seen Megan Barnard recently? Yes, our grief has brought us together. I never really knew her before. She's really quite a remarkable girl. But I would never tell her about my dream. Why not? Is it her you are attacking in your dream? No, it's Betty. And once Betty is dead, it's Megan's face that appears in its place. Very interesting. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay, so it happens that he wants to be with Megan. Donald was in love with Betty, does not kill Megan. He really likes, yeah, okay. Mr. Fraser, I think that the real meaning of this dream is that you are in love with Megan Barnard. Please go on. Do. This dream certainly betrays your guilt. Oh. But what do you feel guilty about? Having killed your fiancé? Possible. Or forgetting her very quickly for her sister? Certainly. And this forgetting is perceived as a second death. So you don't really think I was the one who killed Betty? I do not exclude this theory. I am simply saying that I do not need to know that fact to explain your dream and your guilt. Thank you for being frank, Mr. Poirot. You've helped me a great deal. I'm going back to Bexhill. I'll not take any more of your time up. It is late, Mr. Fraser, and you are tired. I'll sleep on the train. I like trains. It's easy to sleep rock by the sound of the wheels. He likes trains. Oh, he completely lost. The killer the likes trains to like too. Him. I think Megan will take care of him. Oh, I remember. Megan will Did definitely take care of him. 
Yes, we'll be receiving it tomorrow. Bien, it is late. I now ask Miss Gray to come tomorrow morning. I have a few questions I wish to ask her. Mademoiselle, I ask you here in order to answer a very important question. Uh, accuse her of being the killer's clout. Remind her that she did not see anybody. Accuse her of having lied. Am I right? Let's not go there yet. You said that you did not speak to anyone on the day Sir Carmichael was <laughs> murdered. <laughs> it's the absolute truth. Yet, Lady Clark maintained that she saw you talking to a stranger on the front doorstep. Really? She must have been mistaken. Oh, I remember now. I'd forgotten all about it, but it wasn't important. It was just a salesman. One of those traders who sell stockings from door to door. Can you describe him to me? Medium size. Glasses. Dark suit and a felt hat. Not the sort of man you notice. Completely harmless. That's why I forgot all about him. Nothing else? He was very hesitant and shy. Usually door-to-door -door salesmen are very confident, but he wasn't. Mm, ask whether she resigned of her own free will. Indicate that she lied about leaving. Point out her departure is suspicious. You did not leave Chester willingly, I believe. I don't wish to lie. Lady Clark did not appreciate my presence. And Franklin? cannot go against the wishes of a sick lady. He is a good man, and he worries a great deal about his sister-in-law. I noticed that you left some personal belongings behind at Tristan. Are you planning on going back to collect them? No. I prefer not to carry the weight of the past. Yeah. I must ask you one last question. Please reply frankly with either yes or no. If Lady Clark had died, would you have agreed to marry Sir Carmichael if he'd ask you? How dare you ask such a question? Sir Carmichael treated me just like his daughter. And all that I ever felt him was affection and gratitude, nothing else. Mm-hmm. Thank you, mademoiselle. I will not keep you any longer. I met Thora Gray on the stairs, her cheeks were ablaze, and she appeared to be deeply hurt. Poirot, have you offended the poor girl again? Do you have good <laughs> again. for accusing her? I accused her of nothing, Hastings. I simply asked her an important question she did not answer. Let us see if we can answer it for her. Alright, let's see. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. All right, would Thora have married Sir Michael if he had lived? I think so. Sir Michael offered Thora a brooch. Let's see, Sir Michael found Thora charming. Thora is a base of battle relationship, yeah. Thora would have married, certainly. You must know how to read between the lines, Hastings. When Sir Carmichael refers to paternal affection, he's lying to himself. Read this engraving on the brooch. A dark dragon for an angel with glossy hair. These are the words of a lover, not a father. Lady Clark was not wrong. What if Sir mm -hmm. Carmichael had fallen in love with his secretary? That doesn't mean that she forced him to do so. True, there are extenuating circumstances. She is a penniless orphan. But she's calculating. Just look how she avoided it when asked if she would have married Clark. I see. You think she seduced Sir Carmichael for her own gain, and that now she is doing the same with his brother. Praro, your world is a very dark place. Do not get carried away, mon ami. We have another more important matter to settle. Really? Yes. Would you believe that Miss Gray taught me something new? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. 
Is there another common point between the murders? And he was the salesman. Okay. It's perfectly clear, Hastings. Perfectly clear. Indeed, a stocking seller visited Andover, Bexhill, and Churston on the day of each murder. We have our suspect. This should be of interest, Jop. Okay, then we have to call Jap. Chief Inspector, we are looking for a stocking salesman. I see you have a suspect. Yes. Contact all the stocking wholesalers who may employ him. Your suspect is a salesman? No, he does not take orders. He sells door to door. Right. The hunt is on. Are you leaving, Mr. Cust? Yes, I'm going to Cheltenham. You shouldn't travel today. You don't look very well. I have to. I... I have engagements. I must respect them. Alexander Cush. Oh yeah, that was the guy before. Who is he? Can you get the post, Hastings? And why don't you go and get it yourself? Très bien. What's going on? I've never known Hastings to be so disagreeable. Go and collect the post, okay? Poor Mr. Poirot. I'm quite sorry for you. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We've a long way to go still. Typery? No, that comes later. Letter T. The next little incident will take place in Doncaster on September 11th. So long. ABC. I should compare this letter with the one on my desk which I received earlier to see if it does indeed come from the same person. <laughs> Royal Mathematical and Statistical Society's Bulletin, September the 9th, 1935. The Alphabet Murder, a Methodical Madman. It's highly probable that the alphabet murderer will kill again. Could we possibly estimate the number of victims in his next crime? Yes, and it is easy. As soon as we know the ratio of towns, cities and villages whose names begin with a D and the ratio of English people whose names are spelled the same. On the one hand, the ratio of towns, cities and villages in England with the names starting with D and, on the other hand, the ratio of English people with a name also starting with D. After this initial calculation, it is easy to deduce the likelihood of actually being murdered if you belong to the target population. Go to the last page to find our results and details on the calculations. Daily Blague, August 31, 1935. Moustache at half mast. Poirot's repeated failure in ABC case. Sometimes small things trouble great men. Hastings, faithful collaborator of the Belgian detective, knows something about it. Three mornings in a row, he confided to us, the cook broke the egg yolks when preparing Poirot's breakfast. This apparently casual event has greatly disturbed my friend. To the point it breaks his concentration and slows his judgment. I also noticed his moustache, of which he is so proud, being duller than usual. Poirot, I assure you I haven't said any such thing to the journalists. They twist everything. Hmm. 
All right. Now let's go to the table. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this eye is weird. <laughs> mm, it... Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Hastings, he strikes tomorrow. Chief Inspector Jap? He's on another line. Can I take a message? Yes, please, mademoiselle. It is from Hercule Poirot. Tell him ABC strikes tomorrow in Doncaster. He must call me back. Very well, sir. Bien, now I'm going to see what I can find from these burnt documents. I've received the product I need. Hastings, if you do not mind, I would like you to take a few notes. Yes. Yes. Why is he so mad? Let's see. Oh. Now, down to work. All of this needs putting in order a little. Hmm. Oh, this one goes here. 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 This page is finished. That's done. Three more mm -hmm. to go. This one. Here. This page is child Oh. This page will be reconstructed in a flash. This page oh. is finished. Okay, and next. that's two done. It's easier than I thought. Okay. Next. This there. does not look too difficult. Uh. Here, oh. I think that this is... <laughs> there, right there. This page is finished. Okay, next. Only one more. Yeah. And there. 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 This page is charged. Yeah. And there. This page is finished. All the pages are reconstructed. Okay. A dry cloth. A bot a bottle of solvent. Okay. A bottle of solvent. Yeah. The cloth is now soaked with solvent. There we go. What does that do? Got it. Make a note, Hastings. Make a note. Mrs. Alice Asher, Sharpona in Andover. Tracheitis, hemoptysis, prescribed laudanum. I got it. Look. Poirot, where on earth did you find these files? On a fire at the bottom of the garden at Comside. All right, but where did the person who burned them find them? Uh, read the... Okay. Alice Asher, shopkeeper in Hendover. Tracheitis, hemoptysis, chronic cough with lots of blood. Prescribe laudanum-based cough medicine. Betty Barnard, waitress in Bexhill. Chronic bronchitis, causing dysphonia. Advice to stop smoking. Alexander Bonaparte Cust, 
while wounded, oh, that's him. Mushed of gas and head trauma, pulmonary emphysema, hemoptysis, coughing fits with blood, suffers from absences and amnesia. That's the guy that it keeps showing. Dudley Dunbar, owner this of guy's the next. One hotel in Dudley. Asthmatic, heart disease. In Doncaster. Let us now try and get our That guy's next. To work. We gotta, we gotta save him. Or try to. Where do the burn documents come from? Victims of from throughout, yeah. Okay. The burn documents are medical records and without a doubt, they come from Clark's archives. First of all, because all the patients have thought conditions. And secondly, their name starts with either A, B, C, or D. And it is precisely the files that match these letters that have been tampered with. But why burn these files? How come the names of the two victims appear on them? And who are the two other patients? These are very good questions. Answer the phone. Hello, Poirot? Any news, Chief Inspector? You wanted a stocking seller? We have one. Reported by his landlady who thought he was behaving suspiciously. He has the most unbelievable name. What is your stocking seller called? Alexander Bonaparte. Yes. A, B, C. That's it's it. a serious lead. I caught Doncaster. A person matching Cust's description has been seen at the station. He got off the train from London, but after that, Nobody knows where he went. Indicate the Black Swan Hotel. Say to search London. Say to search all Doncaster. Has the town searched? Indeed. It's the only thing to do. But the town is large and time is short. It appears that all our hopes rest on the local police. I trust that they will be up to the task. Something is bothering me. Can you reread the burnt documents? Look at the fourth file. Dick Dudley Dunbar, Black Swan Hotel, Doncaster. Mm. Dieu, this thing's bien sûr. It's the fourth victim. We must warn Mr. Dunbar immediately. I'll call the Black Swan. Hello, the Black Swan. Hercule Poirot here. May I speak to the owner? Speaking. Dick Dudley Dunbar. How can I help you? Is there Mr. Cast among your guests? He arrived today. Shall I call him for you? No, it is you I wish to speak with. But who is this Cust? Have you heard about the ABC case? Oh, yes. I must say, I'm not all that reassured. What with my name starting with D and all that? You're in danger. Beware of your guest. Do you think that cust might be dangerous? Oh, I do hope you're wrong. He seems so harmless, you know. Yes, completely harmless. Do not be fooled. He has already killed three people and you are next. A murderer? Uh, under my roof? Good God! Dunbar, can you hear me? Dunbar! Hello? Dunbar has had malaise. That's all we needed. I'm calling the Doncaster police. I hope they get there quickly. Hello, Poirot. We have some good news. The police in Doncaster have caught our man at the Black Swan Hotel. They're sending him here by train. 
How is the hotel owner? He had a heart attack. He was taken to the hospital. Oh no. It is my fault. When I told him the killer was at his hotel, I should have been more considerate. Come on, Poro. You weren't to know he had a weak heart. No, of course. While we're waiting to question Cust, we could search his room in London. Where does he live? The Marbury Guest House. I'll see you there. Yes, but start without me. First of all, I have to sort out a few details for Cust's transfer. I understand. A bientôt. Hastings, we are making good progress. Please go and search the room of our number one suspect. With pleasure. I did have a dentist appointment, but I'll cancel. A dentist? So that is why you are so nervous and bad-tempered. A visit to the dentist is never an enjoyable prospect. But an unavoidable one. Go to your appointment, Hastings. I will manage on my own. To Marbury Guest House, please.